Hi, everybody. You're listening to the Songwriters Across Texas podcast, where we get to know musicians through their stories and introduce you to some of their songs. I'm your host, Carl Anderson, and today we're broadcasting from the great Arlen Studios in Austin, Texas. My guest is Steve Lum. San Antonio native Steve Lum was a full-time mechanic back in 2013 when he formed the Smoke and Burnouts, placed an ad on Craigslist looking for a drummer and a bass player to play punk and rockabilly. Well, it wasn't that hard for him to find those players, and by 2014, Doritos had licensed one of their songs during South by Southwest. They've been playing ever since. Welcome to the show, Steve. Thanks. Thanks for having me. He's going to play a song called The Things She Said. You swore what she said was true She made you out a fool Now you're out Sixty grand Yo, kid, don't talk to you Cause she believed it too Man, you're living In your head She strung you along She played you like a song As you lied To yourself As she pulled the strings You never questioned anything all in the open and you can see you tend to do every nade with your money and your deeds but she don't have time for you one disaster then the next you look through window and check now you're that creepy dude for almost two years you thought the star was near and that you finally a seat my man it's great to be back at arlen that's right you're not you're not a stranger to arlen studios i am not uh i went to uh media tech in 2006 and learned how to record in a real studio and uh learned mixing mastering post-production audio 101 business of music all all kinds of cool stuff but i didn't end up pursuing it because um at the time, the, the the digital revolution was was happening and and home recording, mm-hmm. so none of the all of the big studios were closing down. It's it's great Arlen is still here, but right, a lot of the studios around Austin were were closing down because um, it was becoming affordable for for people to to buy the gear and and, and get good quality recordings at home. And it, you know that was two thousand six, so it's it's gotten crazier now you right know? it's even easier now and the the 
the the recording stuff just gets better mm-hmm. and better and better. The, I mean, I will say this: there is no substitute for a, 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 a acoustically treated room and and great gear, you know, and someone that knows what what they're doing. Right now, when you record now, do you do you self record or you go into studios? You go into studios, don't you? Yeah, we've we've gone to uh, f- yeah for the smoke and burnouts. We just we'll go to a studio and record. I don't I don't try and record them. Right. It's too much to do uh, double duty and and be engineer and. It's but, nice you know. to not have to do it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess you got to be able to pay for it, but it's, true. It's not that hard. Uh, it's it's not. It's actually easier to to go somewhere and do it. Let's talk about your uh, beginnings. Uh, you grew up in San Antonio. I did move there. Well, my teenagers, we moved moved there in eighty nine, I think. In eighty nine. And um, a friend of mine got a, uh, I think it was a Harmony Electric with a little practice amp. Yeah. So every time I would go hang out with him, I'd check in to see how he was doing. Because I didn't play either, but I seemed to be able to pick it up, and I had a lot of fun doing it. He he got bored of it after a while, so I, I think I traded him a skateboard deck that I didn't, I couldn't adjust to. And he wanted it, so we we traded a guitar for a skateboard. You were a skate kid. I was. Yeah. I still am to to a <laughs> to a small degree. You still I get still a ride board. around. Do yeah. you? I, I still oh. get up and ride around. He had Steve has a dog. Uh, uh, he he fosters dogs, and he he let them pull you on the skateboard. I do. Um, I've, I've kind of slowed down. I I used to be uh, a lot crazier, but I. I there's video of me out there pulling, having five dogs pull me around the neighborhood, and I, I think I wouldn't try having five dogs pull me now. But right, if I did, I would definitely wear a helmet. <laughs> when you were so. a kid and you're turning around on the skateboard, were you? W- w- did you wipe out a lot? I mean, was it just? Oh like, yeah, and, oh yeah. But that was part of the fun in a weird way. That w- and it didn't hurt back then. You know, you just kind of got up and brushed it off and kept skating. It hurts now. I mean, I'm almost 46, and uh, right. one fall, I'm like, okay, I'm done for the day. I'm done for the week. Mm-hmm. Uh, how does it? How does the music mix in with skating? Skateboarding got me into punk rock when I was real young. Well, maybe like 14, mm-hmm. 13, 14. But I, I mean, even before that, I remember that the older kids at the at the local ramp would blast like Minor Threat and Suicidal Tendencies mm-hmm. and just high energy music because you know we. I still liked metal back then, and I, I mean, I still do, but, you know, you couldn't really skate to metal. Just, I don't know. I guess you can, but it seemed more natural skating to some 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 punk rock. Totally. <laughs> so. I, all the kids I knew skated were went to that kind mm-hmm. of music, for sure. And it kind of went hand in hand, so, um, yeah, I just, uh, you know. So I you traded for that, uh, that that guitar, and uh, how, how did you do with that guitar? Uh, it, you know, it took a little bit, but once I figured out a, a bar chord or a power chord, that's, I mean, you can do, people have made a whole career of that, you know, just playing power chords. So I I got to figuring out uh, the Ramones songs, and, and from there it was all downhill. I was like, this is you know, three chords, I can do this. Right. I can write a three chord song and, and, and have fun, you know. And it just never stopped. <laughs> so... Um, you know, here I am, thirty something years later, and still S- still writing songs yeah. and still still going still for it. And um, uh, you're you have a a, a mechanic uh, business that you've been a you've been a professional mechanic uh, mm-hmm. your adult life. You were in the military. That's where you learned that, correct? No, I was doing it before then. Really? I started in high school. Um, they had a really good automotive program there. I had a really good teacher, and it it always just clicked. It always made sense, like just the way my head works. <laughs> so, I got you. No. When did you start writing songs? The first band I was ever in was this punk rock band called Drano out of San Antonio. Drano. Drano. And um, I think, yeah, I mainly came up with the music for that, uh, the bass player at the time. I mean, we were all starting out, just kind of learning our instruments, which was cool. Um, that's a great way to... You know, great way to start your career you know with with some friends that are having fun and and you know it was punk rock so it didn't really matter if like we weren't trying to be led zeppelin or any you know so it was like let's just bang it out and have some fun and 
create some havoc somewhere. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, I remember I I did a lot of the words and uh, the music and would kind of show them to the band, and then usually like the lead singer would rewrite everything or whatever. But I didn't give it. I didn't care at the time. I was just wanted to play. You know? Right. And I'm, to to a certain degree, I'm I still just you know <laughs> just want to play sometimes. So. Was there one one way to approach it, or do you come up with the the words and then make music, or the other way around, or neither? You, usually, it's some kind of riff, or you know something, and I, I base the song around that, and then uh, play around with it for a while, and you know let it. I don't know what the word is. Let it fester. <laughs> Talk <laughs> like, to you. Yeah, because I'll, I'll I mean I'll write. I'll write some lyrics or, you know, I have a song idea. I'll, I'll put it down on a notepad and just kind of let it, uh, yeah, I'll take my time with it now. Back then I was just ready to write something down just to have, just to say we had another song, you know, right. just start on the next one. But, but now, um, yeah, I'll, I'll start writing on a notepad and usually I'll leave it out on, on my, on my, uh, my desk or on you know like the bar by the kitchen and and i'll think about stuff you know throughout the day i'm like this this would be a cool line this might work there and just keep on adjusting it until i'm i'm satisfied with it or um is it is it almost like you're listening for it and and you keep you know, the notebook out and, and yeah i was um that reminded me of something i we had a song. We still haven't recorded this one. It, it's called "Going Down," and it was basically about uh, um, a guy waking up from a cocaine binge and realizing he had just killed his significant other, and he realized <laughs> there's no way out. And um, huh. I didn't know how to end it, but I, I woke up um, one morning to go to work, and the ex-wife still had the TV on. I think Turner Classic Movies or something like that, and. Um, so I got up early and and she, this TV was still on, and as I was walking to the bathroom, um, one of the characters in whatever movie it was said, uh, "If you've got blood on your hands, you can never wash off." <laughs> and yeah. I, I made my way to the bathroom. I was like, "That's the line. That's how I finished that song. I've oh, got wow. blood in my hands. I can never wash off." So you so, you needed that line yeah, somehow, and it came to me. Oh, that's great! I love stuff like that. Some of your you have some dark matter uh, in your in yeah, your song. yeah. I've I've been told I need to write a happy song. Or <laughs> Is there such thing as a happy punk song, <laughs> a rockabilly uh, song? I guess so. There's got to be. I mean, but I mean, I, I've got to be. I don't know. I, it's not. That's not my thing. I guess. Right. I think one day I will. Uh, I'm just not quite there yet. Um, I, for for me, if I do something, I I. I have to feel it or believe, you know. Um, who <laughs> who uh, who inspires you in Austin? Man, there's a lot of great musicians here. Um, Alejandro Escovedo. Alejandro. He liked the band. We <laughs> we got to meet him. Um, we practiced at the same space, mm -hmm. and we were practicing across the hall. And I was walking up the stairs, and I heard that song "Castanets." And from coming from the big room, and I was like, oh, I told the guys, I was like, Alejandro's here. And I was like, you know what? I'm, and I'm still such a fan. I, I didn't want to practice at all. I just wanted to listen to him practice all night. <laughs> and then I was worried we were going to piss him off because we were, you know, it's, I didn't want to, you can still hear other bands in, in the room that you're in. So right. I was like, it's like, man, we're going to piss this guy off with our crazy rock and roll. And, um, we got finished up, and they were finished up about the same time. And um, yeah, we met him a couple minutes later. He, he was super nice. Like, a, it was very nice to um, meet a hero that was really <laughs> genuinely cool. Kept telling us to grab some food on the way out, and sweet. Um, played a couple songs for us, and wow, yeah. He That's told us. He told us. Told us we were smoking. And I was like, man, we're at the smoke and burnout. So, so you're so once yeah. again, sir, you're right. Yeah. So he liked what he heard, and it was it was awesome. And we had just got back together after that, after a long break. Mm -hmm. And um, 
that's an interesting that that's a good segue because you guys uh, you know you start the band with this ad in the Craigslist and mm-hmm. you know husbands and dads may apply and it, that means you know weekend warriors is good for this because um you have your job and um, you were married at the time and uh, a lot of dogs to look at and just lives and mm-hmm. so you're like I I don't need to necessarily go out and try to tour I want right. to have a band that we can play gigs around yeah. here yeah and I, and I still. I mean, that's still all I want to do. I mean, I I can't go on the road at this point or anything. Maybe a quick West Coast run or some regional shows, but right, a a thirty day tour is like out of the question at this point. So right, and you probably wouldn't necessarily even want to do it. No, I'm I'm too old for that. Well, I shouldn't say I'm too old for that. It's it's something I don't want to do right now. You seem to me to be someone who really uh, thought, you know, listen to your own drummer. Yeah, you, you, your own inner drummer. So I'm gonna have this in my life and this in my life, and I don't need it to any one of these things to make me whole. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the way I look at you. You know, like it. Ta- I think it takes a lot of artists uh, that that are trying. You know, you you obviously you want to you want an audience. You want to get paid, right? And you know, probably to a certain degree, you want some notoriety. You know, and how much is any of those things? really were it's a good question because it it can go too far too you know it's different for everyone but you like you it it took me a pretty long time to go guess what i don't need i don't need the fame and i don't need to be rich either right you know like to earn a living and make some good things you can't sort of have that the whole time i mean er, i wasn't playing I, i took a long break from playing music um I forgot where I was going with that. Took a long break from playing music. Yeah, I think back then, I mean, even when I wasn't playing music, I was I felt I was still active in the scene and and I still um went on tour with with different bands. Right. Um, and uh a lot of your y- friends were musicians. Yeah, I mean, um I went on tour with the Lazy Cowgirls from from LA, did a, a Northwest tour in like 2004. And uh, a lot of my friends that were going on tour, I made you know made sure that their vans were were gonna make it and were safe to take out and stuff. Right. Um, and even bands that came through town that I didn't know that were on the same label as other friends, you know, they were like, as soon as you get to Austin, we'll have we'll have Steve check out your van and you know whatever issues you've got. So. And you became the rock and roll mechanic. I did. Which that's how I met you. It is, yeah. Yeah, and you fixed my car that that the garages couldn't figure out how to fix. I remember me. that. And you figured it out for really cheap, and I was like, oh, I love this dude. This is my dude, and he plays music. I remember <laughs> that. You know what else I remember is that one of the days we were going to get together, I, I kept having to reschedule, and I was like, I'll be there Wednesday. And then Wednesday I found out Steve Earle was doing an in-store at, at Waterloo, and I was I like, remember that. I remember calling you. I was like, "Hey, um, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be there at six or whatever. I got I got to check out Steve Earle. He's doing solo acoustic at Waterloo." And you were like, "That's a good reason." <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I remember that. Uh, that's what else I remember about that. And Waterloo was way too crowded, so I didn't make it to Steve Earle. Are you ready to play us a second song? Um, we'll see. tells you what to do But in the end I guess it all backfired on you I 
I didn't change I didn't gamble all the money away I didn't drink I went to work every day You wanted more But I had no more to give So things alive well, I guess it is what it is Forget all those lies in your head I didn't, so can you All I wanted to do was hang with you, my friend But nothing was ever good enough for you Nothing was ever good enough for you So full of rage you just couldn't let go of the past and act your age. Maybe give yourself a fighting chance. What do I know? Not much but a thing or two. I know this ain't love. And somehow that's all right with you. I hope you forget all those lies in your head Go ahead and blame me, I know it's not true I did everything that I was supposed to But nothing was ever good enough for you Yeah, nothing was ever good enough for you Nothing was ever good enough for you Nothing was ever good enough for you Never enough. Never enough. Never enough, Steve. Nice job. Um, Thanks. When I know that uh, we've talked about, you know, Steve did an episode of our TV show, which you should go to the YouTube channel and check out, by the way, um, right after you watch this. Uh, but, you, you know, you talk about, you, you write these songs that you're, they're fantastical and they're, you know about blood sucking uh, vampire chicks and stuff like that, and they're fun as can be. Mm -hmm. That song's a little bit of a departure from those types of songs. It is, yeah. I, that's that's not going to be a smoke and burn out song, but uh, it, I wrote that for the for the show, right? Uh, um, you know, I figured there were other <laughs> real songwriters, but um, no, I just wanted to write a. You know, a solo acoustic song that was It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I, I like you in that style. It's a, you know, I mean it's maybe when I get older I'll settle down <laughs> some I'll, uh, I'll do more of that stuff. But. Oh I don't know. let's <laughs> just not get too far ahead of ourselves. Um, Thank you. Yeah, so uh wh where where are you at with this uh record release? Um, so we've got like maybe nine more songs to record. Um so um, we'll probably get back in the studio April or May, or April and May, knock it out and have it done by June. You gonna, you gonna go to space again? No, um, I want to go to Airy Studios with uh, Mark Addison. Oh, Mark Addison, very good. There's mm -hmm. a nice choice. Um, are you setting that up with Mark? Mark has been. Uh, I think I want to say Airy Studios has been uh in action since at least 2000 maybe 99 something like that and uh a lot of really cool music's come out of there he's an excellent producer so i i like that for you yeah i i think we're in good hands with him so just and gotta do it you've been friends with him anyway so he he kind of has an understanding mm -hmm. for who you are so yeah. that's that's cool yeah I, I think i saw him maybe last monday i can't remember I, the days go by so quick so yeah i saw him recently He's doing good. Good. 
He's also a dog person. Like he, he is. Yeah. Do you want to talk? Do you want to talk a bit about what you what you do with the fostering dogs and everything? Because I think a lot of people would would find yeah. that cool. Um, since twenty thirteen, um, been fostering dogs, um, rehabilitation and finding them homes and keeping temporary dog. You know, we've had almost thirty dogs. I think come stay with us for you know sometimes a couple months sometimes years well eight. we had i think two of them stayed over a year um are some of them just harder to place because they're damaged well yeah um they've all bounced back um some were in pretty horrible conditions um and and they take longer you know to get uh rehabilitated and, and, you know, be a normal dog again. Um, sometimes it, you know, it, it, sometimes it comes about pretty quickly. Others just need more time, you know. Where did you learn how to do that? Did you, like, watch a bunch of uh, dog whispers or did you take a class? <laughs> no, just, um, actually, Caesar has, <laughs> Caesar Milan has a really good book. A lot of dog trainers have, like, mixed thoughts about him. Um, but my my takeaway from everything he does is exercise, discipline, and affection. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, dogs have needs, and if they don't get their needs met, then they're not going to act right. <laughs> so right, exercise, um, discipline, affection. Mm-hmm. Um, you're the pack leader. And that was the main y- thing I said <laughs> yeah, from him. Yeah. You're the pack leader every time. If your dog doesn't understand that, you're in trouble. Yeah, it's a lot of work. You know, you got to walks in the morning and a lot of them were high energy dogs like the breed we fostered mainly for was the german shorthead pointer the, for the texas joint german shorthead pointer rescue right um so they you know they're they're high energy dogs so that's why they pulled me around on the skateboard it was easier to <laughs> to get five of them all at once instead of taking five separate walks or or you know two or three walks it was just all right we're gonna go run right and they were gonna probably pull you anyway mm-hmm. so you might as well be on yeah. wheels Yep. Um, one of the dogs that stayed with us for a whole year um, had been chained up to a tree and pretty much left. And, you know, they fed her and stuff, but it wasn't a good situation. So um, she had bit a boy that was messing with her, and uh, they were going to put her down after that. So someone in the rescue group stepped up and said, hey, we'll, we'll take her mm-hmm. and gave her to us. And she wanted to fight everybody, fight all the dogs, and didn't like humans. Understandably so. But doesn't that make you just like, I, I would drive me completely insane to, to be in the middle of that a lot. because It, it just takes time. Um, time and patience, you know, repetition and like trust. Just right? Yeah, and, you know, letting her trust you and building the trust and not mistreating her or anything. Right. So it it takes a while sometimes. Um, the hardest part about fostering, unfortunately, is like you get attached to these dogs. So, you know, saying goodbye was was probably the hardest part. Um, There's a song in there somewhere, isn't it? I'm just saying. Um, you've had some variations of the band, and uh, you've got a mariachi horn player that got incorporated into the band after a while. I thought maybe you could take us through some of the the progressions of how these bands. Um, so we started off as a three piece and, um, you know, drums, bass and guitar. And, um, we wrote a, um, an instrumental surf song. Cause we, we love all that stuff. Um, punk rock, classic rock, surf, metal. Mm-hmm. Um, so, we we wrote a song that needed it really needed a, tr- a trumpet to tie it all together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we were at practice once and I had you know the keyboard with the trumpet sample on there, but it sounded really cool. But I was like, we we can't do it like this live. We need a real trumpet player. So again, we put an ad on Craigslist and and uh, yeah, this this guy responded. Not this guy, <laughs> Court, my friend Quarter Moon responded. He wasn't my friend at the time, but. Um, so yeah, we just wanted to have him come out to the show and just play one song 
and uh, we hit it off, and uh, he ended up playing a couple songs, and then after a while, I just started writing trumpet parts <laughs> for the songs. Right. And um, yeah, at one point, we got another guitar player, Patrick. Um, he played lead guitar. He was really, really good, good fit for the band. Um, he left in probably... 2016 or 17 I can't remember and um yeah we just kind of went back to the the three piece and and the trumpet like I said we 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 uh started writing more and more trumpet parts for them and it just kind of became our sound after a while it's pretty I mean I can't think anybody else who has that in their band you know, in their punk rockabilly right. mariachi. Yeah, it, it does put a um, a unique twist on it. Um, it's totally, it works seamlessly. Right, like, you know. so, yeah, and then and, and at every show he wears the mariachi suit as well, too. So people are like, what the hell, when, you know, when he comes out. So, right, um, but it's this big spectacle watching a mariachi mm-hmm. horn in the middle of a rock show or right. a punk show or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then he pulled you into the mariachi. World. He did, yeah. Um, so they needed a guitar player, and and um, we were talking. I asked him if he had found a guitar player for his band. He was like, "No, do you want the gig?" And um, a couple weeks later, I was playing with him. And uh, I think the last show, the last time we played was was May of 2020. Um, Shorty, the band leader, had passed away from COVID in um, September. And then in November, Quarter Moon, the trumpet player, had a stroke. That's right. And um, he's 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 better now, um, but I don't I really don't know if if the mariachi band's getting back together or not. I still keep in touch with uh, guitar own player and. Uh, you know, we talk about it, and I'm just like, hey, you know, take your time whenever. Call me. You got my number. I'm not going to. Well, you guys would go to play at churches and. Uh, oh, we did all kinds of cool stuff, mainly private parties, but. Quinceañeras. Quinceañeras, yeah, yeah. weddings. Um, played a couple Mother's Day. Um, a couple Mother's Day gigs at, at Our Lady of Dolores Church, and uh, we did. Thanksgiving senior citizens breakfast, I mean the the Thanksgiving meal. (laughs) Yeah. Um. So yeah, I always had a lot of fun and um. It's very interactive. Yeah, I mean, it really is walking around like playing to people. Yeah. Yeah, I I really had to. I struggled keeping up with those guys. I mean, they had been playing that stuff all their you know most of their lives and i don't you know the new guy just learning everything so but you said the mariachi stroke was kind of like a punk stroke yeah on some of the faster mariachi songs it really is so i was able to to do that and, and shorty was always happy with me because i could play it fast and play it loud right so uh, all that training yeah worked so since playing in the mariachi band, I've kind of incorporated some of those chords and song structure and in, in, into the Smoke and Burnout song. So, um, yeah, it was a very cool yeah. experience. Um, I I hope to be doing it again one day. How long do those gigs last? Oh, they're brutal. If you're wearing like, we we had to do a. Um, the guys didn't like doing restaurant gigs because it's it's a lot of just standing up for hours. You're right. Uh, we did two that I remember my feet really hurt after a while. One was at uh, Cisco on Cinco de Mayo. Uh-huh. And that went on for a couple hours. <laughs> and the other one we did was a, a private backyard party. And uh, I think we were only supposed to do an hour. I think we did three. Wow. It was crazy. Yeah. Wow. We took little breaks and stuff, but it was brutal. <laughs> that's because that's a it's a that's a lot of time to be on your feet playing and singing and all yep. that. It is, Steve. It looks like we're just about out of time. We got time for one more song, but I wanted to thank you again for coming out. Thanks and, for having uh, me and 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 playing for us. Uh, you got one more? I do have one more. It's called uh, "The Girls Got Issues." The girls got issues. It's about a crazy girl. <laughs> you can try that. <laughs> Who 
daddy never loved her Her mother was insane She only wanted blue Like a zombie wants a brain All the boys told her lies Just to get her into bed She always believed her Yeah, they were messing with her head Now that girl has got some issues Yeah, that girl has got a show That girl has got issues And she's gonna take it out on you Her knight in shining armor Never did show And she was running low on money She started dancing on a pole And all the gentlemen went crazy Oh, and they called her to the stage But little did they know Well, that homegirl was underage yeah, now that girl has got some issues Yeah, that girl has got a show Yeah, that girl has got some issues And she's gonna take it out on you One day she hatched a plan Yeah, you know what went down She torched that awful place And got the hell out of town She packed up all her stuff Into a beat up truck She headed out west And now she's making her own love And it was working really well She told him everything About her private hell She accepted him wholly And said he loved her to the bone But if he ever leaves her She's gonna slit his throat, yeah now that girl has got some issues Yeah, that girl has got a show Yeah, that girl has got some issues And she's gonna take it out on you Bravo. Thank you. Steve Lum, Smoking Burnouts. Thanks again for being here. Thanks for having me. Adios.